Hey everybody, it's Bruce and the Dog on the Floor, and today we're going to talk about the concept of a dot product. Now, a dot product is just a function that takes two tensors and returns another tensor, but to reason about it, sometimes it's helpful instead of using tensors and IEX or notebook, it's helped to use a mathematical notation. And this is the notation that we're going to use. So on the left hand, you, you see a tensor with a shape of 2, 3. And on the right hand side, you see a tensor with the shape of 3, 4. So rather than expressing this as a list of lists, we're going to express this as a 2 by 2 matrix, though dot products can work with, with larger matrices as well. But we want to help you to develop the intuition of the dot product with, with this mathematical notation because it'll be easier to see kind of what's happening on the screen. One of the things that you might have noticed is that the arguments to these two dot products don't have identical sizes. And in fact, the sizes might not look compatible to you. Along the way in this discussion, we want to talk about first the way that we determine the individual dimensions and second, the way that we actually perform the individual computations. So it's going to be a good episode and it's going to help you build the foundation that you're going to need when you kind of start working with these machine learning algorithms. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, from looking at this, you can tell that in index, this is going to be a function with two inbound arguments and a tensor for a result. And so if you look at the dot product, then it's it's a little bit awkward because the dimensions on the left don't look like they have anything to do with the dimensions on, on the right. So the only requirement for making these compatible is that the number of columns on the left has to match the number of rows on the right. So what size is the result going to be? Well, we're going to take the rows on the left. And so that means that there are two rows, so the result is going to going to have two rows also. And we'll take the columns on the right. So the right hand side has four columns. So the result is going to have four columns. And that means that this is this tensor is going to have a shape of two comma four or two rows and four columns. And they're going to be a, a result of, of a mathematical formula that's going to produce each cell. So let's look at a formula. So let's look at, holy cow. So the result is going to be a mathematical formula that computes each stars, but it's going to be made up of a row on the left and a column on the right. So for example, if we want to compute the upper left, this is what it's going to look like. So the formula that we're going to use is going to be, I'm going to take the sum of the products of the rows and columns together, right? So I take the rows and columns, take that product, and then add, add the results together um, to give me a sum. And so this is what it looks like for one, right? So I take the row and the column. And so that first row is one, two, three. The first column is one, five, nine. And then in the upper right, you can see that I'm, I've lined them up for my multiplication. And then the next step is just to take that product. I just multiply each one of those together. So one times one is one, two times five is 10, three times nine is 27. So I have one, 10 and 27. Then the last job is to add them together in a sum. So one plus 10 plus 27 is 38. So the upper left on this dot product is, is 38. So you can see how this is going to work. We're going to leave that 38 alone and then we're going to shift to the right. And that means that we're going to stay in that upper row so that left hand one, two, three is going to stay the same and also in the list above. And then we're going to shift the rows on the right hand side to the right. And so rather than working with one, five, nine, we're going to work with two, six, zero. So then I just do the multiplication as before. One times two is two, two times six is 12. 3 times 0 is 0, and when we add that up, we get a 14. And then, so we're going to keep moving across to the right in exactly the same way. So if you look at that 2, 6, 0 row on the right-hand side, that's going to move to 3, 7, 1. And then when I do that math, I get a 20. And then with 4, 8, 2, I do the same thing, um, and I get a 26. And so you can see that all I'm doing is trying to get the intersection 
of the two different of the row and the column that's in, in the diagram all the way to the right. And so let's go ahead and shift down and do the next row. So the next row is four, five, six, and we're gonna go through the same process with that bottom row. And so I get 83, 38, 53, and 68 to complete my dot product. And let's see how that math works out. So now I'm gonna to shift to IEX and we're going to process this in EX. All right, so let's go ahead and, and use NX to actually process, to actually build these tensors. So the left one is just a basic counting tensor. So this is NX.IOTA, that's the counting function. And um, this, this had two rows and three columns. Right, but I need to add one, but this addition needs to be the, the kernel, so um, the kernel from def end, so that I pick up the tensor aware math. Right, so I want kernel dot plus, and then I'm going to add. So I could add a tensor, but I'm just going to add a one and that'll broadcast. And since this starts at zero. And since my tensor started at one, I need to do this. And so this gives me the tensor that I'm looking for with one, two, three, four, five, six. Now the next one I'm just gonna do with a list of lists. I was trying to save a little bit of, of room and, and make things format nicer in the presentation so that I keep I could keep the numbers large and everything. But all I need to do is create a, a tensor tensor out of a list of lists. And so this was um, one, two, three, four. And the next one was five, six, seven, eight. And here's where I outsmarted myself. So nine, 10, but uh, I just wanted to keep those small. So that's what this tensor looks like. So these are the two tensors that we have in the example. And so I ought to be able to say um, nx dot dot, for a dot product and I ought to add, I ought to be able to add left and right. So the dot product is going to, so the result, if we're right, should be, well, there's two rows and four columns. And let's see if we get it. So we got two rows and four columns. I remember that 38 in the 20. So I think that we're looking pretty good. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring up the other diagram. So let's see, we got 38, 14, 20, 26, 83, 38, 53, and 68. Let's see how we did. 38, 14, 20, 86, 83, 38, 53, and 68. So our math, math is correct. And this is going to be an excellent tool for you. It's normally, you're normally not going to do a lot of dot products on your own and, and unless you're kind of working down deep with, with neural networks. Some of them are gonna be built for you, but if you're implementing your own, you're going to have to have an intuition of how dot products work, and especially how to keep the dimensions compatible. And so these are the tools that you're going to use for that purpose. This is the way to think about the dimensions on the result, and the way to think about the compatible tensors, and how the math works inside. But this might seem like it's a little bit random. So in the next Groxio video, we're going to talk about how to develop an intuition for exactly what's happening within a dot product and, and actually what we're computing. And that's gonna be a good episode too. So keep learning. This is Bruce and the dog on the floor with Groxio Learning.